traditional cattle herders like the Maasai, mm. other groups in Africa, Karamajong, um, that, that live in their kind of natural environment. Um, they've got very, very dark skin, yeah. but they're outside yeah. all day, every day, under the tropical sun. Yeah. Yeah. And their levels of vitamin D in that, what you could say is a completely natural human environment, yeah. is well over the 100 nanograms per uh, nanomoles per litre yeah well over the 100 sort of the 150 yeah 160 kind of range yeah which suggests to me that that and that seems the optimal level around about 150 nanomoles per litre but it doesn't go higher and people do not get uh, vitamin d excess from the sun and it's considered that any excess vitamin d in the blood is inactivated by the sun. The sun has a controlling effect both on the production of vitamin D and on the blood level of vitamin D. So that means if I took a lot of vitamin D supplement but was out in the sun, yeah. my levels probably wouldn't go too high. But if I took a lot of vitamin D supplement and lived indoors, yeah. there is the potential yeah. for overdose. Now, how, you, you, you've been a doctor for a long, 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 long time. Um, have you ever seen a case of vitamin D hypervitaminosis? No. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> it is staggeringly rare. Yeah. And it's always due to either stupidity yeah. or mixing up the dose, micrograms, milligrams. But, <laughs> okay, which is a thousand times different. Suppose you were in a really bad mood yeah. and you wanted to give me too much vitamin D. Yeah. So it caused high blood calcium, high yeah. percalcemia. Yeah. How much would you have to give me, probably, in terms of probability? Probably over 100,000 units a day. For? Yeah. And also with calcium. For, for, for days and weeks. With calcium. Mm. You d if you're taking vitamin D, you shouldn't be taking calcium. If you're taking a higher dose of vitamin D, don't take calcium. Because that, that can lead to problems. We don't need calcium. We're not short of calcium. There's plenty of calcium in the diet, but we need vitamin D to absorb calcium from our food. Mm. If you take K1, the bacteria in our yeah. colons are going to yeah. produce vitamin K2 for us. Yeah. It's a new thing, which I, I, I don't know an awful lot about, to be quite honest. The idea is that the, that the K2 prevents the calcium being deposited in the tissues. Well... Calcium is deposited in the tissues where there is chronic inflammation. And it's not very common, actually, either. Mm. You know, you, in, in... We see occasional drain pipe arteries, don't we? Where we you do, indeed. Sort of see the yeah. calcium in there. That's because the arterial disease is due to chronic inflammation. The chronic inflammation is there because the people are vitamin D deficient. <laughs> you don't get the chronic inflammations yeah. when, you, when, when, when you've got plenty of vitamin D on board. Vitamin D is an inflammatory modulator. It absolutely, it does. See, when we get an, 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 an acute infection, we had a body response, which is actually orchestrated by um, something called TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. That's orchestrated, this acute response. To pro-inflammatory. Pro pro absolutely, yeah. Cytokine. But that has to be switched off. Remember the cytokine storm yeah. in COVID? That was TNF-alpha produced, modulated. Too much of it. And what it has to be done, it has to be switched off. And trans it's called the macrophage balance hypothesis. The macrophages, white cells in the tissues in particular, are producing TNF-alpha and it has to be switched off to produce something called TGF-beta, transforming growth factor beta. Which is a damper down of it. A, yeah, it's a healing one. Mm. It damps it down. It's part of the. It's, yes. it's part of the specific targeted, immunity defensive immunity. Then, so we're going from TG, TNF alpha to TGF beta, and that transformation is modulated by vitamin D.